Greetings to did greetings to each and everyone. I want to give God thanks and praise again for the opportunity of allowing me to be here. Um, saying that with a lot of passion and even saying thanks be to God. I know many of us are out here now today and we are still focusing on many things that have gone through our life for the past time. I don't even want to give it any time. One of the experiences that many Grenadians had, still talked about in some corners of the evening of the globe, that the light which came swiftly and just disappeared. Brothers and sisters, this is one of the things that Jesus Christ spoke to us about. Also, giving God thanks and praise here, we are in a hot dome. As I say, we're trapped in a hot dome, very heated. But I still give God thanks and praise. Two weeks in September and very heated. When I look at the news and I watch at what's happening in places like Libya and Morocco, we still have to give God thanks and praise. In Morocco, Friday night, everybody went to sleep. And part of the night, 10, between 10.30 and 10.50 p.m., massive earthquake up to today. They still are searching. Still can reach some of the remote, remote areas. In Libya, Sunday gone. That massive flood. Storm passed, extra rain burst two dams. Over 6,000 lost their soul and still counting. We are here, we give God thanks and praise, and that is, why, that is why I want to give God thanks and praise for having me here because it just shows how short our time is, how easy we can be here today and gone tomorrow. And sometimes we take it for granted that we have the authority to move and do everything that we want. But it is not so, brothers and sisters. God has our time in His hand. And some of us have just blessed, as he said, to be living on this face of the earth still. Amen. Before I go into my lessons today, I want to just lift up this country also in prayer because for the past few weeks, we are facing some on challenging times. I think it is necessary as men of God, churches should forget everything behind and focus on God to intervene in our situation that we are facing in this land. Yet we might, we might seem small, yet compared to many countries, maybe seems nothing much happening. But one is just one negative impact on this country is just one too much. Amen. Father in heaven, I thank you today for your mercy. I thank you for your grace. I thank you, O God, for allowing me to be here today again, O God, to share your word, O God, for the Lord. First of all, O God, I want to thank you for continued blessing of the sponsors and also the management of staff of MTV, O God, so that this ministry will continue to go on as long as you allow it to be, O God, for the Lord. But I pray, O God, for our country. I pray, O God, for every situation that impacting us negatively, O God, for the Lord. You would intervene, O God, for the Lord. I pray for the hurting ones even right now, O God, for the Lord. I pray for those who may not be hurting by impact of, O God, financially or any other thing else, O God, but the spiritual soul is crying out, O God, for the Lord. I pray today, O God, that you can intervene, O God, and Oh God, let them have that inner peace which, oh God, they are longing for, oh God, Father. Touch them, oh God. Touch every home, oh God. Everyone who is listening, oh God, across the tri island state and beyond, oh God, Father, Lord. Ask for your blessing upon their life in Jesus' name. Oh God, help me as I am about to minister your word, oh God, Father, Lord. Let, not, let me not speak about me, neither what I want to say, but that your word go forth, oh God, as you said, and we will not return unto you void. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Here yeah, today I want to I want to touch on a, on a lesson, a message, which I think would help each and every one of us. The theme of my message today is: Are we ready? Are we ready? And this scripture was given in Matthew chapter twenty-four, verse forty-four. He said, "Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour." As ye think it not, the Son of Man cometh. Now that I was sharing earlier on, 
many Grenadians had the experience. I, I did not because where I was at the, at the moment in them. But it was early that, afternoon, that evening time. And many people was about uh, their own business, going about doing their own business. And as they would tell you, suddenly that bright light just overtake them. And suddenly as he, take, he overtake them, suddenly it just disappear. Jesus Christ teaches us that as the, 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 the lightning flash from the east to the west, so shall the coming of the Son, this, the coming of, the son of Man will be. And what it tells us here, that is an experience that if we are conscious minded and spiritual minded, will just show us that when God speaks, we just have to listen and obey. A lot was fearful. Who probably grow in church, who have a knowledge of it, and to them they thought that was it. But I still ask myself the question, does that touch the heart of many lives having such experience? Because the Bible said that two shall be walking, one be taken away and the other one be left. All of that could have happened at a certain time. But yet we are still here, we are still going about with our, our own business. I want to point out here today and tell us that there are scriptures that many who, know, who go to church or who knows it, use it as a proverb. Speaks about, if my people who call by my name, but in Ezekiel chapter 12, and around verse 25 speaks about that proverb which cease one day. We, many of us, think that the wrath of God will not rest upon this earth anymore. But he did not say so. What he said, the next time will not be water, but fire next time. We are living under grace, and we're taking a lot of things for granted. We're doing a lot of things which is unnecessary, which sometimes I say, hot. Our oh, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, even in the scripture, speaks about the Christians, speaking about could we continue in sin that grace might be abound? God warned us about that, and we need to get to ourselves ready. As in, in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 44, he said, Be ye ready. Why he saying to us, Be ye ready? Because there is a time coming that when none of us expected, but he would put in his presence. And if we are not ready, that's it for us. I always say that. Eternity will not be a place where we would be like you come out in some festive season or you pass through some exam or whatsoever it is. And the day after you start sitting and you're speaking about what the experience was so you could re remedy your situation if you get another chance to go along. In eternity, when we pass from this life and into eternity, there is another chance more than the one we have already gotten. The Bible said, after that is judgment. That don't mean that you judge immediately, but when you die, the next step for you in life is straight into judgment, facing the judgment throne of God. Judgment seat of God, which way he will be sitting and judging you according to your works. The Bible is so serious of how we live our life. It still says that those of us, many who have their names within the Lamb's Book of Life, it will blot it out because of the unforgiven sins that we are, they are still committing and the way that they are living. It is a very serious thing, brothers and sisters, that we are living on. We are, we, the time that we are living in now. And I want to bring to our attention here a significant event that is taking place across the globe now. And I don't know how much, how much leaders, whether it be government leaders, non-governmental leaders, schools, workplace companies, are and more so the church is taking note of because God has told us that that time will come and I'm seeing that there is a gathering the Bible said that he would gather them in one place right and I want to share from, from, with, with us here a specific scripture to show us where he speaks to us in Matthew chapter 24 verse 44 and asking us to be ready at any time Ezekiel chapter 38, from 1 to 4. And the word of the Lord came unto, his, unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against God, the land of Megah, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him. And say, This said the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O God, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn thee back and Put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth 
and all their enemies, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shield, all of them handling sword. Just want to go into 39 and show us something here again. Therefore, thou son of man, prophesy against God and say, Thus said the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O God, the chief prince of Meshach and Tobiah. And I will turn thee back, and I and leave but the sixth part of thee, and will cause thee to, to cause thee to come up from the north part, and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel, and I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand, and will cause thy arrows to fall out of thy right hand. Thou shalt fall upon the mountain of Israel, thou and all thy bands, and the people that is with thee. I will give thee unto the, the reverence birds of every sort, and to the beasts of the field to be the devourer. Now, what I'm sh sharing here with us today, I want to bring us some critical information. That is why Jesus Christ is telling us again, are you ready? Now, since the Americans invaded Kuh, Iraq, I've been saying to people, this is a downfall of the, of the, America, the American army, and even as we will say the United States. Many people was not understanding because they were not seeing what was coming. Brothers and sisters, since I'm growing and I, 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 I read, I study and understand and look, I always say to people, America is a, is a state, is a country that is standing between the West and the Eastern Bloc and the communists that protecting many of us here now. But after that invasion, and many people thought that America was going there after their own interests, here God is saying to us that he has the authority to dictate what he wants. America, as we know it today, as many people will call it, the big hole, the one that caused so many abominations across the globe. But I just want to stress on America's situation being who they are. But I want to show us that there is something that is on the, oh, the, oh, the horizon that we need to take notice of. With that, they gone also into Afghanistan. And what we see happening, they were humiliated both in Iraq and in Afghanistan. I also said to the people that what would happen, America would be demised around them and the currency would be weakened because they would continue pumping money into this place and there wouldn't be any reward, there wouldn't be any benefit from it. We have seen that they have got to pull out that Iraq and Iraq is even worse than what probably there was before. Tribal war. We have seen what going on in Afghanistan, and we see what going on in Afghanistan now. It was not a war that they had won. They did not make this world better in such a position. But that was not the, 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 the reality of it. I don't know how much there are many young people may not know that. 1989, when the Soviet Union had been demolished, broke up into pieces, that was a significant mark again that the world should be taken note of. The same man who is there now, Putin was the leader at that time of the KGB in Eastern Europe, Eastern Germany. And when he saw what went on, he vowed that he would take revenge on that. Now we have seen him sitting in Moscow as the president. And he is ready to take over the southern part, the northern part of Europe. And we have seen that he has annexed part of Ukraine. And the West had done nothing about it. Now he decided to go after. Ukraine itself, and we have seen that the West are pumping in so much into it, but there will not be a victory there. Brothers and sisters, there isn't a victory out of that. What I have seen happening there, that Putin realized that he has losing the war. He has have, have lost so much integrity, so he got to build himself back. But what I want to bring to us here, which is written in Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39, that God work is at hand. Because say that is God and may God. And when doing studies, I don't want to be specific. I don't want to be the perfect prophet. 
um, prophets here, prophet here, I don't want to be that. But I'm just showing you the alignment, what is taking place across the globe. And if we are not careful as leaders of the church and even the unsaved, not watching to run to the ark before it's so that it would overtake us. Brothers and sisters, understand what I'm saying. The West was dominating for years. And I listened to these men. Both Putin and the president of Russia, of China, have said the West have pushed them too much in the corner. They will not take any more bullying from them. But when I look at the scripture and what is happening here, these are men who are now are forming alliance together to come against, they see themselves to come against his, um, the West. But automatically, they would be the one which God would be speaking about. You may ask me why I'm saying that. Look at the type of countries they are associated, associating themselves with. We look at, we call BRICS now. BRICS is, was made up of five countries. Five countries, Brazil, Russia, China, India, and South Africa. And at that time, the, the world was not taking them on. They were not seeing them as any strong force to deal with. The last meeting these people had shows that these people have a lot in common which could destroy the West. And when I listen to the meeting, I listen to what the, 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 the real issue is and what they are formulating themselves to. Because if you know that the UN, the IMF, and the World Bank is sitting in America, and before something happens, before a country do something that America don't please of, first thing that they do, they put sanction on them. And these people say, this thing's got to come to an end. So here what's happening. These people now, with inviting six more countries to join them they will be they will be controlling 36 percent of the world wealth and 46 percent of the world population and also 80 percent of the world oil the world oil now hear what it is when you control oil you control countries and the bible make it specific don't hold the oil now, when you control food, because they control many food, you control the people. China is a massive industrial place. You ask yourself the question, what and how much does America produce? How much does Europe really produce compared to what the Eastern Bloc and Asia is, compared, is, is producing? You talk about India. India is almost 1.5 billion people. China is almost 1.4 billion people. Between two of them, they almost control 4 billion of the world population. So then they don't need us to trade. They are big enough to trade. But what I'm getting at here, and even listening that India also is against Israel. China, Russia, together with Iran, because Iran now is in that block. And Iran's whole motive is to, 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 to emulate Israel. When we see these things happening, these people coming together, because China is anti-God. They are full communists. Russia was somewhere they was drifting away, but we can see now there are dictators who are going at everything and anything. Because look what's happening. While he's putting sand, while he's attacking Ukraine, blowing up all the grains and the, the, the bonds and the field and the machine. When Ukraine attack them, they call it terrorists. But he don't care. He blew up the bridge, he blew up everything. He don't care less. And the Bible speaks about all of that. What I'm coming to. Look at the, the, the formulation of these people. These are the people who have hatred in their heart for Israel. And these are the people, this is one of the things that God speaks about. They will come against Israel. May and may God would gather themselves, would form our alliance. And we look at where is Russia. Russia is in the north. Russia, China, and also North Korea. They are actually in boundaries. These are the people who have strong ties together. And these are the people who have not seen the West, neither have seen Israel, because Israel was aligned together with, with, with America. And we have seen America is getting weak on the world stage, because these people who call themselves BRICS already said that they would have, and they already have their own bank, so banks, so they will not depend on the IMF, neither the World Bank to give them any money. We all know that Iran was making atomic bombs, and for years they were sub, sub, subdued to that. They were, they were, they were actually kept low because they wanted America 
to ease the sanction. So in order than that, they was arguing. Now they don't have to go to America for any argument because with the alliance they are in, they, are, they will be able to trade. And they already said so. The oil and everything else, they will be able to trade across the globe now. And the money, the what they will be receiving is not the US dollar any, anymore. Presently now, they have the one as the strongest currency within them, but they are putting together to make a one currency among themselves, which will be the world currency, as they would call it. Brothers and sisters, we need to know that. It's hard times coming up. Jesus Christ said, are we ready for what is to come? We are in the West just sitting here idle. We in Grenada here, as I would say, we more con concerned about where the party are, what is the fun day. We, even from church, when we come from church on a Sunday morning, all we know that we wish for service to over and for us to get home. Some of us might go home, we might have little things to do home, but we have those of us who already plan of going on a picnic and taking a drive out because that's all we see. We just like the children of Israel when God have taken them out from the land of Egypt in bond, from bondage and they went oh God, into the wilderness. What the Bible says, they, they get up to play. And many of us as Christians today, that is what we are doing. After God has delivered us from many, many dark side of our life, instead of we get ready and prepare ourselves for his second coming, we are getting up and we're starting to play, we're starting to have fun. I have said before, and I continue to say it today again, that many of us as Christians, we are more focused and we are more serious about the, the physical aspect of our life and not the spiritual life. And I want to tell us today, the spiritual life is more serious than the physical life because everything that we have seen happening and what will come to happen already noted in heaven. This is why you talk about the vision from Daniel and the vision from Revelation with John and you talk about the vision from Ezekiel and, Dan, and, and Jeremiah and Isaiah. It's already established established in heaven and it must come to pass so we can do what we want this gathering of that army coming against Israel must come to pass and where does we fit in there wouldn't be no space for us and why I want us to know today I want us to get to understand the seriousness of what is taking place before our eyes our very eyes the Bible said that many of us the, the things of this world the enemy will blind our eyes the Bible even speaks about those of us in church. He said there will be a falling away because we will not have any interest in the things of God anymore. He said also, when I come up with I find faith because he know the time will be crucial. Things will be tough and many will give up. The Bible even tells us that even he will shorten the days for the elect's sake because he said if he don't shorten the days, not even one flesh shall be saved. When you look at Iraq, you look at Iran, you look at India, nuclear, nuclear, nu, nuclear war countries, nu, these countries have nuclear. You look at China, with the massive army and everything that they are building and the nuclear that they have. You look at Russia also, and then now you have North Korea are coming in into that fold. You are, are a state which want to emulate the West because of the, 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 the hatred that they have for them. Brothers and sisters, this is what we are facing. When you look at the countries now that are making friendship together, who is aligning themselves together, they are not our friends. They are not one that we should take lightly. The Arab countries are in it. Saudi Arabia and the other, the, the United Arab, Arab, Arab country are there also. This country are joining an alliance come 20. 24, the first day of January, they will be a member. And these are the people who have the, the resources to dictate so many things. But they are those, the Arabs are those who are against the children of God, against Israel. And brothers and sisters, I want to let you know also, within that, Daniel speaks about it, Jesus Christ speaks about it. In Matthew chapter 24, Daniel speaks about it in, chap in, in Daniel chapter 9. When you see the desolation of abomination of the chill of those who standing in this, in, in Jerusalem, look out. Now these people they are aligning themselves. And we are here. We are looking at it as just an ordinary time. Brother and sister is not as time as usual. I keep saying it over and over. Many of us as leaders in churches, many of us as ministers, we need to take foothold. We need to take note. We need to go deeper into the word of God and see what is happening. We will not understand the fulfillment of prophecy if we just sit in and feel calm and comfortable, just sitting around our own little table. When you listen to our news in Grenada, very well you hear something disturbing coming from it. But when you listen out there and you go into the scripture, you have seen so many things are unfolding that the scripture is speaking about. 
I want to tell us today, Israel are the time, timeline for what is to come. Presently now, that many people may not understand, it has to happen. The Israeli government have to set a standard that when they pass a law, that they will be able to move accordingly and not waiting on the, the, the judges to make that decision. Because for long, if they make a decision and not pleasing to the people, they can shut it down. And Israel have to come up to stand and out to prepare themselves to defend their own self. And because I have seen, and I said before, right now, the block that are coming together have not seen, have not seen America with anything to trouble them any longer. Not, neither, not the army, neither the finances. Neither talking about sanction because this sanction have no bearing on them again. Because America put sanction on them, it would only circulate more or less around the Western world. But as I said to you, these countries and them are so powerful now. They, when they come to the 11 member of that Brooks, they will be 46% of the world population. And a country of more than 36% of the world wealth. What do they have to beg us for? Nothing again. They will need nothing from us. And we thinking that they are coming to make this world better. They are aligning themselves for their own, for the purpose. But what I'm looking at, if it, this is what God is speaking about, gathering them together, putting and hooking them out, and bringing them to the place that he wants them to destroy them. And we have to look and see carefully. Look at who are the, those, uh, those armies that gather in together. And look at the enemies of Israel. What I'm saying here, brothers and sisters, many may not be saying it. There is a second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he has spoken about it in Matthew chapter 24. And he said, when you see certain things, look up our redemption joy at night. Sometimes we say to ourselves that when we preach them things in the church, we're getting people scared. But people should not be scared. Because if we take the word of God in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 44 and tell us, be ready for a time we think it not. So when this thing happens, we will not be fearful, but we will be happy to know that we are getting ready to go home to join our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is what we have to prepare our people for. Not preparing them to have a wonderful time on this face of the earth but have a heart and a passion for the, for the to, to, to meet the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in his second coming. I want to thank God today for the time we have spent here. And I thank God for the opportunity that he has given me to share that word here with us today. I trust in God that I will be able to come back and enlighten us, enlighten us on that event, that continuous event that is taking place. But we in the West, we in Grenada here, the same, neither the, the same and also the unsaved. We need to get ourselves together. We are, look at this, we are facing two weeks in September, hot sun. And I can tell you from the profession that I am in, our food already is looking scarce on the table. And the Bible tells us one of the things are going to happen. Famine. Many of us who follow many of the news and we have seen that happening. When one part is burning out, the other part is flooding out. And it take a long time to restore. You hear them say that. It take a long time to restore what is lost. If something is on the horizon. Something is there. Something much more than what many people witnessed that night. Seeing it as a flash of that light in an instant was there and then was not. There is much more of that coming. Brothers and sisters, the unsaved, man, bro, man, woman, and child out there, listen, get yourself together. Be ready for how you think it not. Noah built an ark for 120 years. He preached for 120 years and nobody take heed. But when he had finished that act and God tell him what to do, bring in everything that God asked him to. When he had finished that, God had shut the door and no man could not open it. And that is when the reality of mankind recognized they are lost and no man could save them. Brothers and sisters, I don't want that happen to us here on this face of the earth. There is enough signs, there is enough warning for many of us to get ourselves ready for what is to come. Let us not take it lightly. Thank God that he has said one thing. For the remnant's sake, there would always be a remnant. There would always be those who are ready to meet the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Are you one of those? You can be one of those even as now. Surrender your heart unto him and he will make sure that you're getting into the ark of safety in Jesus' name. I want to say thank you again for taking the time out. I'm Minister Ferguson, non-parallel of my church. 
And also at times you will see Reverend Kelly Gangadin. My phone number is 404-0405 and Kelly Gangadin 444-8281. Just want to close in a word of prayer. Father, I thank you today for your mercy. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for the opportunity that you have given me. I can share that word today again with your people, O oh God, Father Lord. Lord, there is a cry out there, even at the time of John. Get ready, for there is one that coming. He said, even one that is not worthy to, 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 to tie his shoulders. I am just that one here today. I'm not worthy to be sitting here. But thanks God, thanks be to God of his grace and his mercy. He's seen me fit to be here, to be his messenger. And I'm come here to sound the, the warning that there is a second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And there is some terrible times ahead. Tribulation and, oh my God, pestilence and famine. You don't have to go through all of that. Only what you need to do is to give your heart and, and soul to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and He will take you home. I want to thank you again for listening and thank God for the opportunity that He has given each and every one of us that we can hear His word in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and